Hello, in this video we're going to have a look at the flight simulator app for the DJI Phantom 3 Advanced or Professional. The flight simulator app is currently only available under iOS and I will be demonstrating it on my iPhone 6 Plus. Uh, to use it though, you have to have your Phantom on, as mine is right now. So, and to get to it, once you have your pilot app open, is navigate to the help menu. <clears throat> so, um, let me just get my tripod level here if I can. Let me stop moving. So let me go to the uh, help menu. And here you can download manuals and here's your flight simulator app. So, you click over there. And it's a perfect simulation of your Phantom. And You'll choose OK. You can change between the map views as you would during your regular Phantom, showing the maps, moving it around. Let me just change it to um, the compass view there. You use the controls as you will normally during uh, flying the Phantom, as well as the side switches if you have multi-flight mode enabled. <coughs> and. Uh, you can use the uh, return home buttons like you would. So anyway, let me first start showing you takeoff. You can take off with the automatic takeoff function or through a CSC start. So let me do. The home point has been a takeoff. So there we go. I took off. Or I could do an auto landing. Slide to land. Landing. Now let me note that uh, my control is set to mode 2, which is a default setting that these things are in, and what I recommend most of you keep yours in anyway. Uh, mode 2 basically means that uh, this makes the Phantom go up, down, rotate left, rotate right, forward, back, left, right. And I will give you a close-up view in the app when I take off again. So a quick look at the readings in here. Is this shows the relative position of me to the Phantom. And here's my height, my horizontal distance, vertical speed, horizontal speed in miles per hour. And this is distance from home point, I believe. And restart will reset the app back to where you are if you fly your Phantom too far away and you just want to restart it quickly. So, um, and this shows you your control and video signal. This is how much battery life you have left on your Phantom. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, here's your battery life indicator. And H means that it will ask you to return to home once your power battery level drops down to where that is. The further you fly away, this home point will move away. So anyway, let me take off again. This time using the auto function. Wait a minute. Take off. I bumped the tripod. That's only me. Now let me bring the phantom into me. So I do highly recommend using this app for new pilots or just in general to have fun. It's a way of you learning how to pilot and use the phantom and the app without risking damage to your phantom. Now again, let me show you, let me zoom out again. So you can see what I mean about the controls. Here, this moves up, my phantom down, rotates right, rotates left. And this is forward, left, back, right. So 
So let me move, get closer. Now let me go back closer to the screen. I'd say the rendering looks really nice in it of the Phantom. So let's take this for a little bit of a spin close by. <clears throat> so it's also a good rule of thumb as you're flying as a new pilot to keep the nose of the Phantom pointed away from you. So uh, you don't lose orientation. You don't get mixed up by the fact that the controls get reversed when you're pointed at you. Because as you see, when you're pointed away, um, left is left, right is right, but when you spin the sucker around, like right at you, you now left is right and right is left. A lot of people get themselves into trouble that way, especially someone, some people will fly in confined spaces and get confused and accidentally fly into a tree because they're miscorrect. So starting off, you definitely want to keep it pointed away from you. So that way the orientation is easy until you until it becomes second nature to you. Okay, let me circle around myself a little bit. Closer to me now. Rotate in. Oops. No, what? Let me zoom back into the screen. Let's try return to home and land. Let's see if that works within the simulator. Go home. Can you see my beeping? Uh, when it goes home, it first ascends to your predefined height, which I think I have set to 150 feet. Whoops. Which I have set to 150 feet right now. Then it should fly back to your home point, and then hover, and then land. Landing. And if you wanted to stop the landing, you could just click the red button here or this button on your remote. And it will land near where we took off. And that's it. Then you could just um, take off again with manual controls by moving it in either corner or this the corner. Point has been updated. Take off. So it doesn't matter what corner you move it in. Uh, keep in mind, do not do that while you're in flight because it will automatically cut off your motors regardless of whether or not you're flying. So th again, that's any, any corner like that is the automatic start and shut off of the motors. So normally when you land, let's see. Right here, let me do another ma manual landing. Let me show you my stick controls. I'm not going to use ESC this time. Usually, so usually when you land, you want to just get the your Phantom Minuto hover. You don't want to be making any corrections. Wait till it goes into a stable hover, and then slowly bring it down until it touches down. And then keep the stick, the left stick down for three seconds until the motor shut off. And then manually start. The home point has been a takeoff. 
and don't give it full throttle when you take off. Some people say 100%, don't really recommend it. Just light throttle up about halfway up between, which is roughly three quarters, is more than sufficient. And now as long as we're on the app here, taking a look around. Uh, let me show you, I'm gonna fly off in the distance and you're gonna notice that you can't see uh, what's front or back. Oh, actually, you know what, first? Here, let me move up here. Let me move the camera again, up and down. So I'm using the knob on my controller to move up and down. Acrobatic flying. You know what? Let me let me give you a look at um, IOC while we're in here. Since this is a flight simulator demonstration, let's have a look at all the features. So I'm going to move the. Uh, the knob here on the side, all the way down, to put it in IOC. Intelligent, and uh, you can watch my video on how to enable this feature if you don't know how already. Um, I'll have a link in the description. So intelligent orientation control while keep your curtain noise direction of the aircraft as forward. Uh, click reset to reset the forward direction. Reset. So now, it considers where the aircraft is facing right now, it's being forward. So if I move forward, watch here now, I'm going to zoom out so you can see my stick man. So forward, back, and now here's where it gets interesting. Let me move the aircraft sideways. Hey, I'm still moving away. left, right. So it makes for a really easy way to fly the craft. But it, it, it does this in a grid though. So forward is always going to be relative to the forward position that it was facing when you started IOC, not the direction that you happen to be pointing at it with your remote control. but it does make for a very easy way to fly and correct the movements of the Phantom when you're not yet accustomed to it. Although, to be honest with you, I would recommend not really using it so much and just getting used to flying it properly because these assists can fail. Let's say if you lose GPS or other functions and it suddenly fails and now you don't know how to orient the craft. So, don't really recommend using it so much. But it's a nice feature to have there to play around with. So um, let me restart and let me put it back under normal safe to fly GPS. All right, now let me uh, fly out into the distance. Let me do an auto takeoff. Point has been updated. Take off. And let's get a little altitude. Let's see how fast we can. And also, this shows you uh, wind speed. This has a virtual wind speed indicator in it. 
wind speed going in this direction at six miles an hour. So keep in mind, when you're flying with a tailwind, your phantom will fly a lot faster than when you're flying against it. Uh, anyway, let me f move full forward for a moment in GPS mode. You'll see that I top out at around 40 miles per hour. A little bit over 40 with that um, in GPS, with that tailwind. But now let me put it in the middle position. Attitude. And now you see I'm um, pushing closer to 50 mi miles an hour now. And let me put it back in GPS mode. Still full forward throttle. But, um, it's not going quite as fast, so. It's because attitude mode, again, you, um, uh, it tilts more into the wind. It has higher gains. Although when you are in, um, attitude mode, uh, the Phantom will not use position hold to keep its position. Manual takeoff. The zone point has been updated. Take off. Pull this sucker back towards me. All right, so there's a six mile an hour wind pointing that way. So let me put it in attitude mode. You see that the Phantom is now drifting with the wind. So put it in GPS again. Now it's holding position. Let me fly around a little bit. So, even if you fly from the distance, you can no longer see the front of the Phantom. You can always tell your orientation by the way the dot is moving on the screen. Although, I think it's going to be hard for you to see on the video. But basically, you gauge your, your position by um, having forward momentum and seeing if you're traveling left or right. If you're moving your stick forward and you're traveling this way down the screen, then you know that the, fan, the noise is pointing this way. So then if you just rotate the craft a little bit this way until it stops moving to the right, you know you're facing at your current direction. And here, of course, uh, my distance is now 500 feet. My high, I'm only uh, 86 feet in the air. Now I'm flying back into me. You know, let me uh, just restart it. So anyway, so I realize this video is getting a little bit long, but I thought I'd give you a nice kind of look at the simulator app, and of course all the functions, other features work as normal in the app, such as for this, for changing your various settings and whatnot, as if you're flying normally. Um, I don't know if you can take virtual pictures while you're on the app, <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's about it. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and share, and um, thank you for watching.